Hello, and thanks for tuning in to this presentation. My name is Piers Blackster, and I'm the team leader of Aberdeenshire Council's Development Plan team. What I would like to do in this presentation is to give you a briefing on the changes that are coming forward in terms of the new style local development plans promoted by the Scottish Government. In particular, I'd like to discuss with you how we engage with you in that future process. I'm aware that the production of a local development plan can be a complicated and a little overwhelming, but I will try and make it as clear as possible. Having a little knowledge on how we currently prepare local development plans will be helpful. The next local development plan is going to be very different from the plans we have produced over the past decade. It will have a different style and feel. Some parts will be familiar, but others are completely new, both for you and for my team of development planners. A pillar on which it is going to have to be built will be the requirements on us to engage with all forms of stakeholders within Aberdeenshire. We need to canvas your views on how we might be preparing the next local development plan and gain your feedback before publishing a development plan scheme around December of this year. In that development plan scheme, we would like to set out a detailed programme of how we will prepare the local development plan 2027. There are a number of things that we would hope that you can take from this presentation by the time we are finished. We would hope that you have a basic understanding of the impending changes to the process used to prepare a local development plan. You will have a better understanding of how the system will be different from the old system. You'll have a rough idea of when we will be asking you to engage with us in this process, and you'll have some idea of the form that that engagement will take. Most importantly, you will be able to think all this through and be able to advise us on the best way that you can participate in this process. The Scottish Government has embarked on a very ambitious programme to modernise the planning system. This programme is designed to try and resolve some of the big issues that have been identified for local development plans in the past and make them fit for the future. Fundamentally, and above all, there is a feeling that the current system for preparing local development plans is not fit for purpose as it is slow, it is verbose, based on the policy rules that govern whether development can take place or not, and doesn't quite embrace the whole idea of trying to make places better. The development plan has also been identified as not being particularly good at resolving issues relating to the modern world, and it's often seen as being peripheral to those debates. To resolve these issues, the Scottish Government is currently thinking about how we should be preparing plans and what they should contain. And above and beyond everything else, they believe that there is a big need to increase the amount of engagement that people have in preparing the plan. Primary new ideas are being developed on a range of topics to resolve issues relating to people's perception of their own local area through local place planning and 20 minute neighbourhoods and identifying deficits such as an open space and play space. In our defence, I feel that Aberdeenshire Council has provided a very good development plan service to date, and many of the changes that the Scottish Government are looking to implement are perhaps not as relevant here as they are elsewhere. We are particularly proud of the way that we've gone above and beyond in terms of increasing awareness and engagement on the plan, and I'm not going to be so conceited to say that we haven't got scope for improvement. Change is probably a good thing. So now I'm going to take you back a few years to the new legislation that's been introduced that seeks to deliver these particular changes. This is the Planning Scotland Act 2019. It's a fairly comprehensive document which reviews the previous legislation and seeks to update it for modern use. Transforming planning and practice. The Planning Scotland Act is comprehensive in its consideration of a number of topics, but perhaps none more so than part two of the original act. This deals with the development plan and has been reformed to embrace the new way of thinking the Scottish Government is putting forward. Key changes to the development planning law are provided by the new act. However, the Planning Act is not the only document that we have to consider, as the Act is very general in what it says, highlighting that detail will be provided in other documents such as secondary legislation and guidance. Of particular interest are the National Planning Framework 4 and the Development Planning Regulations and Guidance. These flesh out the skeleton provided in the Act. Unfortunately, 
one of the problems that we as a planning authority have at the present time is that Scottish Government haven't actually produced all this policy and advice. They have produced draft documents, so we have a very clear idea of the direction they wish to go and have been consulted on these, but this does cause us some uncertainty moving forward. National Planning Framework 4, when published later this year, will be a formal part of the development plan. National Planning Framework 4 looks at things with a slightly different lens than previous policy. Rather than presenting a national policy on a thematic basis, looking at housing issues separate from other issues, for example, National Planning Framework 4 considers planning under four particular themes. Draft regulations suggest a light touch for obligations imposed by the local development plan, but the guidance provided is very specific. Some of this guidance seems to be less relevant to Aberdeenshire than it might be for other parts of the country. Additional guidance has been produced on open space audits and place-based sufficiency regulations, advising us on what should be in these documents to meet the obligations imposed by the Act. Local pla place plans are a rare example where they have actually produced secondary guidance at this time, and Circular 1 2022 provides clear guidance on the preparation, submission and registration of local place plans. I would just like to step away from the national picture for a moment and think about what the implications are for Aberdeenshire Council and what it means to the local development plan. Because it's a new act with new regulations and new guidance, we have to be really quite careful about how we go forward with the next local development plan. It cannot be a rewrite of the last local development plan as the ground rules have changed. Care must be had that we are meeting the terms of the act and the regulations and we don't fall into the trap of just trying to do things the way we've always done them. We have to take their advice to start early but ensure that we take stakeholders with us to deliver a competent plan. Transitional guidance produced by the Scottish Government suggests that a new style development plan will be required within five years of the national planning framework coming into place. We are going to have to be running very, very fast, faster than we have ever have before to cope with new processes in order to develop a new plan within that timescale. On analysis, a number of things are in and a number of things are out of the modernised local development plan. The old process of main issues report leading to a proposed plan, leading to an examination and adoption has been replaced with a new structure. Some elements of this are familiar, some are recognisable to existing processes, but others are brand new. Local place plans, settlement based expressions of land use development, the production of an evidence report. This collect, collates the information from a wide range of sources and effectively sets the bedrock on which the new plan can be built. And the gate check examination, the call for ideas and the new concept of a modified proposed plan are all new territory, some of which will be partially familiar. And so what will be the timetable for this new process? This slide illustrates what we think the timetable is likely to be, but I have to put my hand up and say until we get the specific guidance from the Scottish Government, this is based on draft guidance, and although we're fairly confident about the stages and the length of time that each may take, I may be proven wrong. These are estimates and they may be inaccurate. The arrow shows when we expect the various parts of the new plan to be produced. You can see from this that we would hope to get the evidence report finished by the end of 2023. We hope to have the gate check examination within six months of that, and we would hope to have the call for ideas by the end of 2024. The local development plan would follow nine months after that. Then we get into the process of consulting on the proposed plan and modifying it before we can actually get to an examination by July 2027 for adoption later that year. My team have been very cheeky to me because they keep on telling me that I shouldn't be putting dates into the plan because whenever I put a date into any work plan, it always turns out to be wrong. So you'll have to excuse me if these dates are changing over time as it will all depend on what comes out at consultation. These are my best guess of what the date should be on how we should prepare the next local development plan. 
So what are the early actions that we should be undertaking to prepare the plan? Well, one of the first things we've got to do is produce an evidence report as the foundation of the plan. If things are not considered in the evidence report, then the reporter at the examination right at the end of the process may turn round and say, well, you have no justification for those conclusions, therefore I cannot accept them. The evidence report has to be a very broad document. It's an encyclopedia. Fortunately, we don't have to collect all this information ourselves. The Scottish Government are quite clear that we can use existing information sources to inform the decisions that we come to. Having said that, there are a number of topics shown here where we do think we're going to have to do some original research to find out what the evidence is on these particular topics. At the end of the day, the evidence report will go forward for a gate check with the Scottish Government Directorate of Planning and Environmental Appeals. This gate check examination is a new thing. We think the function of this examination is to consider disputes on the evidence collected and the conclusions we, we, we have come to. If someone thinks we should have been counting peas instead of beans, then this is the point at which that particular anomaly will be addressed. We're not too concerned about this stage, even though it is unknown to us at this time, as we've been here before and we know what data that we need to look at to inform the decisions that need to be made. Hopefully, disputes and evidence will be fairly unusual. How we interpret the data and what conclusions we draw for inclusion in the plan are significantly more contestable. While we would hope to have consensus from all stakeholders about the conclusions we draw, inevitably that's not going to happen and that will be the function of the gate check examination to make a ruling. We don't know how long a gate check examination is going to take, so we've given an estimate of around about six months for this process. At the same time as the gate check examination, there is a third new stage, the call for ideas. We think there are probably similarities between the call for ideas and the call for bids process that we've undertaken for previous plans to identify the aspirations of the development industry. However, it is more than this, as our feeling is that it's also similar to the stage undertaken right at the start of the previous plan, before we even got to the main issues report, where we can this opinion on what the main issues might be that we should be trying to address. At the call for ideas, we will be asking people to give us their views on what we need to do in the local development plan. Fundamental to this process is that the actions will have to be in agreement with the needs identified within the evidence report. For example, if a major house builder was to propose a thousand homes in a settlement, this could only be supported if there was evidence that shows there was a need for a thousand homes in that settlement, or that a solution delivering a thousand homes would deliver a particular outcome identified in the evidence report. If this was not the case, we would not be able to support that allocation in the proposed plan itself. We would expect people to be looking at the evidence report to inform the ideas that they're putting forward. The evidence presented will not present solutions except at the broadest level, but if you have ideas about how to solve any of the issues highlighted, we would be happy to hear from you to see whether we can incorporate your views into the local development plan. It's at this stage where the elected members get truly involved because they will be required to make decisions about the form and content of the local development plan. While elected members will be involved throughout the process of compiling the evidence report, it is at this stage that we will be taking things to committee to get them to agree positions that we can then take forward into the local development plan. The call for ideas will feed into the proposed plan. The proposed plan is likely to going to be quite different from that which we have seen before. In the first place, we've previously spent quite a lot of time in developing policies for use by development management in determining planning applications. The new versions of local development plans are likely to going to be very light on policy. The reason for this is that the National Planning Framework 4 has national policies. If local policies are not adding any more beat to the bones of national policy, then it is likely that the plan may make no comment at all. The other thing that's going to be different is that the new plan is going to be very much place-based, focusing on areas of significant change. This may result in some settlements not being included in the local development plan. Only th those areas where there is a significant change and where the plan needs to have an active role will be considered. 
When we look across Aberdeenshire, the history of plans in the northeast, there are some communities where we've made land use allocations, but there's been very low levels of growth. Very little has happened and the status quo has been maintained. We think that for us to be effective in what we're doing, we need to accept that the status quo and not promote change where it is not needed. We will concentrate on those areas where specific activities are required to achieve major change and what those changes are likely to be. Our thinking is that the proposed plan will not be made up of settlement statements, but instead we will have action areas supported by design briefs and master plans. There will also be an element of trying to make the best use of infrastructure that we have in order to exploit existing opportunities to resolve particular social or economic issues. The final stage of the plan preparation process also deserves mention. After the proposed plan has been published, we will consult on it and gather opinion from many different quarters about whether people think we've got it right or not. A new stage in plan preparation has been identified where there can be informal negotiation with objectors to resolve objections and derive a modified proposed plan which is fit for purpose. We will need to have some steer from elected members on what we should negotiate on. We will probably develop a suite of documents which identify what the issues are that need to be resolved and then we will negotiate with individuals to try and reach compromise before submitting the plan for examination. Once we've gone through that process, we will publish a modified proposed plan and then this will be submitted for examination. This will be slightly different from what we do at the present time because rather than having the examination consider every objection to the proposed plan, some will have been removed, hopefully leading to a shorter examination process. So when can we expect all this engagement to take place? We are obliged to consult. Within the development plan scheme, we are required to publish how we're going to consult in the participation statement. The development plan scheme is also required to provide a planned programme which details when all the stages of the plan will take place. This may be a little unrealistic because the first thing to go awry in any battle is the plan. With the best will in the world, I think that delay is inevitable. However, we will still do our best to keep to the programme that we publish. We will be asking for your engagement in this process at four stages. We're going to be asking for help on the evidence report. We're going to be asking you to think hard about local place plans. We're going to be asking you to think about ideas that your community or your other colleagues have that should be incorporated into the plan. And finally, we're going to formally ask you to comment on the proposed plan itself. I'd just like to finish off this presentation with a little bit of discussion about how we might engage with you. At the moment, this is very much an open book. We would welcome any ideas from you based on the huge amount of information I've just given you as to what the best way of engaging with you might be. We have given this some thought, but if there are other ways of doing it that you think we should be taking forward, we're only too pleased to hear from you. The first point where we're going to be required to engage with you is on the evidence report itself. We are obliged to consult with almost everybody on everything in the evidence report. We are quite clear about the topics that we need to look at to inform the next local development plan based on our experience, but in the final analysis, other people's conclusions on the same matters may differ. One element that we do not possess is the lived in experience of what people in communities think about their places. We would like to invite you to undertake place standard exercises to identify what the issues are within your area. We would encourage you to have that debate locally and then advise us so that we can include that information within the evidence report itself. Generally, we will be dealing with the evidence on a topic basis and will seek engagement on that basis. There are two ways in which we could approach this. Our preferred approach is to split the evidence report down into individual topic chapters, look at each chapter individually, consult on each chapter individually, and try and resolve issues within that topic independent of other issues that may be raised elsewhere. A review group could be established to inform and audit the work that we have done. A topic paper on the subject would then be published, allowing anyone to comment on the conclusions. The review group could then review this issue that have been raised and derive a consensus or identify it if an unresolvable dispute has occurred for reference to the gate check examination. 
However, there are an awful lot of topics to be considered and it would be no small a task to undertake. As an alternative, we could produce a compendium document that looks very much like a main issues report. This would require us to go through the evidence, identify those main topics that are of particular importance and publish a statement that says we think these are the issues that the local development plan should be resolving. This is not as straightforward as it may seem because we may just be reinventing the main issues report, which the Scottish Government has effectively now deleted. This would be a complex process and it would probably add a significant amount of time to the project timeline. We do not favour this approach because we don't think it's actually engaging with people on the production of the evidence report. It's engaging people on the product rather than the process. But we would welcome your views on these two options. The second area where I would just like to touch on is the call for ideas. As I have said previously, we think that the ideas presented to us need to be checked against the findings of the evidence report. Our first check will be whether these ideas are supported by the evidence report and whether it complies with the conclusions reached. We would expect developers to put forward bids for development sites. We would expect communities to suggest areas of action where they think we should undertake some particular regeneration, revitalization or rehabilitation in their area. We would also expect at this point for local place plans to be produced and to be factored into the equation. This is an interesting topic because local place plans developed by local communities can be incorporated into the local development plan. In order to do so, they would have to be provided to us in sufficient time for us to actually make that incorporation. Although there may be opportunities to give us local place plans late in the process, we think that the call for ideas is the ideal time to actually incorporate those into our general thinking on what the development plan should look like. Our thinking is that we would have to assess all the ideas presented to us and then put them forward to the council for it to make its decision on whether they support or did not support them. We think we will respond to the ideas in the same way as we did with the responses to the main issues report by producing an issues and actions papers for the committee to review and instruct us on the direction that the proposed local development plan should take. Moving on to the proposed local development plan, this is kind of familiar territory for us. We think we should prepare a plan and seek formal consultation on it in the same way as we did on previous local development plans. We would produce summaries of all the objections that we received. We would have to get authority from the Council in terms of those issues we thought were legitimate to try and negotiate on and those issues which were not going to be resolvable. At this point, we would start direct engagement with the objectors trying to negotiate resolution to the issues and achieve appropriate compromise. We will try and persuade objectors to withdraw their representations to the plan or support something new that should be added. It has to be questioned whether we will be able to persuade everyone who's objected to a particular proposal to withdraw their objection and consequently achieve a shorter examination. We think that the number of issues will most likely stay the same. We would have to revise the draft schedules and get those approved by the Council before submitting them with a modified proposed plan which reflects those changes to the reporters for examination. Fundamentally, at this time, we're still looking at the options and no decisions have been made about how we're going to prepare the next local development plan. We have some fairly clear ideas about the processes that we could take forward, but it's important that we don't just dictate what we're doing and that we share our views to allow you to comment on them. We would like you to do a number of things now. The first thing we'd like you to do is to share this presentation with anyone you think needs to see it. We would hope that it gives a very clear snapshot of where we are with the production of the next local development plan and identifies some of the issues that we're beginning to grapple with. The second thing is to note that there are a number of things that we think you should be discussing within your community of interest. How should we engage with you on the evidence report? Are you prepared to undertake preparation of a local place plan? Would you undertake a place standard exercise for us to inform the lived in experience part of the evidence report? How should we be collecting ideas at the call for ideas stage? In the longer term, you might need to think about how you might manage your community's interest in responding to the call for ideas or the draft proposed plan. Last but not least, do you think we've got sufficient elected member representation and scrutiny in this particular process? 
I'm not going to ask you to give me your views on these at this point in time. We have published an online Engage Aberdeenshire consultation survey, which asks these particular questions. The survey is open until the end of June, and we would encourage you to go and express your views within that medium. I will ensure that the link is placed on the Local Development Plan web pages as soon as possible. I think the last thing I've got to say is that I'm sorry if I lost you along the way during this presentation. It's a complex process and it's made even more complex by the fact that it's all new. Hopefully we've managed to achieve the objectives that we set out at the beginning of the presentation and you do have a better idea of what the new development plan system will look like and have some ideas about how we will be preparing it. I hope you will be able to respond to us and give us some feedback on how we engage with you. This would be of great help in moving this process forward. Thank you very much for your attention.